So, good afternoon. My name is Joseph Hahn. I'm a research assistant uh, at Forschungszentrum Mülich, which is one of the biggest research centers in Germany. And I want to tell you how we managed to get more out of Matplotlib. If you want the material for this talk, you may follow this uh, short link here, and you will find both the PDF and an HTML version of this talk with uh, some notebooks I, have, I will show. So we all know the scientific stack. Uh, we have heard a lot about Matplotlib, and I think uh, every, every tutorial uh, we saw the past two days uh, made use of Matplotlib, and it's a de facto standard and the workhorse of uh, the scientific stack. It's one of the core packages. There are a lot of other visualization tools, but uh, there is some problem uh, with all these tools. And uh, the biggest problem, I think, is that we have a separated 2D and 3D world, and there is some missing interoperability. So it's a hard job, uh, probably, to mix two-dimensional and three-dimensional graphics objects. And due to conceptual uh, limitations, uh, most packages are not able to, to visualize uh, continuous data streams. Uh, and uh, if you try to, to improve uh, all these things, then it's uh, often uh, at the cost of some device-specific code. Uh, especially for Matplotlib, there's no chance to write such optimizations without uh, getting into uh, the, the back-end specific uh, part. So what was our approach? We uh, want to achieve more graphics performance, uh, and we did this by writing a back-end, a new back-end for Matplotlib. Uh, you, you might know there are about uh, a, do a dozen of, of, of backends in Matplotlib, uh, but they are all based on very uh, huge libraries, which uh, are not very performant uh, in most cases. Uh, also, we wanted to extend Matplotlib's capabilities. For example, the 3D part is a little bit uh, bad, and uh, we all want wanted to uh, realize this without uh, using extra packages. And you can see uh, in this layer structure here uh, that the GR framework is put uh, uh, just under the backend layer, and we, we don't change anything in the Matplotlib code right now. With the next Matplotlib uh, version, there will be a way to uh, start our backend automatically. Uh, so what are the highlights of this GR framework? As I mentioned before, we, you can mix uh, two-dimensional code with, for example, OpenGL code. There's a very nice Jupyter integration for, for you can uh, display continuous data streams even in the browser. And as opposed to what we, you saw in the last talk, we are talking about dynamic uh, documents, dynamic data. And uh, I want to show later how we are capable to to visualize such data sets. We also have a native uh, graphical user interface integration with Qt4, for example, or, or WX widgets, and this gives us interactivity we need for our applications. There's also a very uh, big advantage because we can uh, output to multiple output devices, so as you visualize your uh, scenes on, on the display or whatever, you can also produce uh, PDFs, uh, videos on the fly. And uh, what's important too, we have uh, wrappers, or wrappers for, for Julia, Python, and all these modern languages, and it works even with PyPy. So here you can see the JAR framework in action. Uh, as a similar example that Brian showed, but the difference is that we use a simple Matplotlib uh, calls to visualize such data, and there's no need for an external library. On the right side, you can see a mixture of three-dimensional graphics uh, with a Matplotlib histogram and with a GR line plot, which shows uh, some, some angles. Uh, the Matplotlib backend is uh, very 
does not does produce the same output that you are uh, used to see from from other backends. And uh, I have uh, right now not seen any big problem. And uh, the only difference is that, that it's faster than the existing backends. For example, uh, uh, you can create animated graphics uh, in in the Jupyter notebook, or you can, as shown in the last example, mix uh, different output uh, features. So when we started uh, writing the back end, I was very optimistic to get a huge uh, performance uh, improvement because our library is completely written in C and it's uh, bound into the uh, SciPy stack uh, just by writing a, a C types wrapper or in Julia by a C call a little wrapper. But uh, as you can see in the, last, in the left two bars, we only have a performance improvement of about 50%, and that was a little bit uh, disappointing. And uh, I made some profiling, and at this point, we, I could see that most of the time is not spent on the back end, but in the artist layer, which I showed some uh, slides before. So uh, in prim principle, there's no room for further optimizations in, on the back end side. And, uh, but the advantage still is that we have more interoperability. For example, to produce inline graphics, you can see it here on, on, on this slide uh, in Matplotlib. Uh, you have to, uh, to, to, to uh, enter some, some macros like Matplotlib inline, and there's, some, uh, there's a command uh, which is not very good documented. It's, it's called clear output. And with this command, which is a part of uh, the IPython uh, package, you can uh, produce a, a continuous output in your, in your notebook. I will show it later. Uh, and if you do the similar, similar thing with our framework, you will, you will see that it's 10 times faster. So uh, again, the problem is that the artist layer is much too slow. And I think it's hard work uh, to, to siphonize this part of the software or make it even faster in, in, with another method. Uh, on this slide, you can see how we can mix different output uh, technologies. I, you see a code snippet which contains uh, pure Matplotlib code. You see a code snippet which uh, uses our GR3 library to draw some molecules. And you see some code which is uh, pure GR code which draws uh, a line of the above data. And all these things can be mixed together into one output window and then rendered, for example, as a WebGL scene. So that's very straightforward, and I will show that now in some demos. Uh, there are some things I've prepared. That was not a good idea. Okay. Um, So I start a Jupyter notebook. Okay, size is okay. And what you can see here. Is this magic call. Uh, I produce, uh, this is a demo from, from the Matplotlib site. And uh, I produce an MPEG-4 file with an animation callback, which produces uh, this MP4 file, which can be visualized in the browser. That's, but that's very complicated. Uh, I think with a GR framework, you can do the same, the same thing uh, on the fly. Uh, I have to restart the kernel at this point. The pro that's a limitation of Matplotlib, because Matplotlib only checks once uh, which uh, backend to use. So now we want to switch uh, to our GR backend. So we run this loop now. And then we can see the video on the fly. So there's no need to write some animation code or write a callback function, which will then be called by the animation package from Matplotlib. It can all be done on the fly. And once you have these things, so 
So this is the uh, same with our GR framework. You see you have only, let's say, four statements here, and you can do all these things on the fly. OK, let's take the next example, which shows how to produce inline graphics. Is it time OK? So now Matplotlib is directly plotting into the can in the into the canvas, into the IPython canvas. So you see that's somehow slow. And in the next example, I will show you that you can speed this up by using our own software. We have to wait, okay. <laughs> so that's the same sequence as our software. It's I think it's much smoother and uh, it produces faster results. And finally, this would be the result if you produce the graphics with uh, JavaScript. I will tell you later that we have transpiled our complete software into JavaScript. So you can use our library in the browser, which is much faster than uh, the other backends. OK, I'm running out of time, I think. So let's get into the interoperability example. I showed the code before. He reads some uh, XYZ data. Um, which is very slow right now. I think I have to restart the kernel. There's some other kernel running. <laughs> so now we have a loop and we render about 100 scenes with a molecule. And once this is rendered, it can be, take some time. <laughs> okay, now we are finished. And now we can show this animation in the Jupyter browser. And you see this molecule structure with a histogram which has been created by Matplotlib and the normal line plot, which has been created uh, by the GR framework. Finally, once you have finished this, you can export it to WebGL, which allows you to rotate the molecule in your browser. Okay, so let's get back to the. So, our current activities uh, are focused on uh, JavaScript. As I mentioned, we have transpiled our complete software uh, to, to JavaScript. And on the right side, you can see a code snippet which uses our software to render some graphics uh, within the Firefox or Safari browser. I will skip these things and come to the conclusions. Well, the speed ups we have expected uh, were not uh, so high. and uh, But uh, the, the advantage still is that we we don't have to, to make some backend hacks to, to, to speed up Matplotlib. Uh, on the other side, we have some more capabilities. Now in Matplotlib, we can mix 3D code, OpenGL code with, with, with poor Matplotlib code, and this makes Matplotlib uh, more valuable. And we can produce, uh, for example, figures much, much faster than uh, with Matplotlib. If you, for example, want to, want to create a 100 PDFs with Matplotlib, uh, it's, it's about uh, 100 times faster uh, with, with a GR framework. And it's very easy because you simply have to set an environment variable. 
So the outlook is that we want to create a self-contained distribution for Anaconda and Canopy. Uh, uh, we want to, and we want to very simplify this. There, there are already packages on, on the uh, servers from Anaconda. Uh, but we want to make it easier to install the software. We want to have more convenience functions, which are MATLAB-like, and we want to migrate the GR3 library, which is currently uh, based on, on, on uh, uh, OpenGL, on modern OpenGL. So we want to use uh, OpenGL shaders and all these funny things. So that's from my side, and that's, here are some resources. And if you have questions, then I'm still here. <laughs> Thank you. Questions? Yeah, so that looks really cool. Is there, um, can I just assume that when I have a running Mapplotlib script and I just use this backend that it still works? Or are there lots of little caveats that don't work? Sp special options or something. I made a selection of different examples from the original Matplotlib library, and that's what you saw on the slide. Uh, I didn't see any uh, differences. It's, it behaves like a, a Matplotlib for GTK or, or whatever you may think about. I just checked the license. It looks like it's a GPL license, which isn't very business friendly. Is there a deliberate decision? We will there change this use? in the next release to a BSD license. It'll be what? BSD. BSD. Thank you.